What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POB. Shout out to the joiners. Shout out to the Point of View crew. And I'm going to tell two stories right now. Both of them take place at the same time period. Same place, Kern County Jail, Barracks 1. They do have some differences though. But the one thing they have in common, both these stories, the catalyst that kicks them both off, is my mouth. My mouth, homeboy. It can be real tempting in prison and county jail to talk. Talk, talk, talk. Either try to show off how smart you are, or maybe just talk and be cool. Try to make friends. But your words will come back to haunt you. They'll use your words against you. So you need to really watch everything you say and lock up, homeboy. And that's all bullshit to the side. Now trip on this. When you walk into any kind of a dorm or cell block, a pod, anything of that nature, Kern County Jail, or prison in California, you'll know right away what kind of motherfuckers there are not there. And by that I mean when you walk in, is it clean? Are the beds made and rolled up? Are people awake all day programming? Working out at least once, maybe twice a day? Talking in hushed tones? Being real serious? Now, if there's that kind of high-powered program taking place in a dorm, someone is pushing that mentality. Because... People, if given the opportunity, will run a sloppy program. Is this easier? Work out, eh, when you're bored. Sleep after breakfast. Sleep after lunch. Pillow. No pillow. There's no pillows there. Blanket and sheet. Just in a ball. In the middle of the bed. Place a little bit dirty. Now, I've lived in a sloppy dorm. That went from sloppy to high power like that. Because this dude named White Machine showed up. As soon as White Machine showed up. You wouldn't even recognize the place the next day. Everyone got on that gangster program. I say all that to say this. My first time doing time, homeboy. I mean, I'd done like a couple of weekends. I'd done a little two weeks here and there. But this is the first time I got broke off five months. Had to do 90 days. I'd go on Barracks 1 of Kern County Jail. And it's a high-power gangster program. All because this dude named Gemini. This dude named Gemini. He was off the hook. Not only was he running that barracks, that dorm I lived in, but he also had keys to the yard and ran the whole yard. And you know what I noticed about that dude, other than, that, other than he caused everyone to run a high-power program? I noticed that when he was laughing, everyone else was laughing. When he was mad, everyone else was mad. I, just being an observer one day, I noticed he was sitting there telling a story. I've been there about a week or two, and he's telling a story to a couple of people that are all laughing and joking. He's like, all right, homies, I'm going to go bust a leak real quick. And when he went to go walk from where he was at to the bathroom. And on the way, he sees an M&M wrapper on the floor, some candy wrapper. And he starts getting mad and yelling, hey, who threw this wrapper on the ground? And it caused everybody else to jump up and yell, who, who threw the wrapper on the ground? So this dude literally dictated the whole mood in the place. That's how much power and yank he had over the door. <laughs> See that gangster ass shit? My door went to go fall on me and I caught it mid-story. So Jim and I, all the way with the business, homeboy. Now this, one day this dude pulls off a just sick with it maneuver. Actually thinking about though, no sweat off his back. He, he, he organized and arranged it. Everyone else took the risk. And what he did, what he arranged, he actually had someone drive right up to Laredo. Right up to the county jail. Now you couldn't do it anymore. Because they have a guard shack and they have like a one of them arm things that comes up and down and controls traffic. They didn't have that at the time. So he talked someone into driving right up to the buildings in their car with a bag of weed. And he had an inmate, one of his homies, standing outside. Probably their porter. They're probably already out there sweeping or whatever the case may be. However, they're not out there to be grabbing drugs from cars that come pulling up. It was a risky operation, bro. They pulled it off. Couldn't even believe that they pulled it off. Next thing you know, they're back in my barracks with their winnings, homeboy, with their score. What they just had went out there and grabbed out front, brother. They got it. Jim and I has this bag of weed that he has someone grab, and he has about three or four of his homies right there with him. And they're looking at it. Now, I'm in my bed. I'm in my bed just chillaxing. The Southsiders had a table right by the front door. A table and a couple of chairs. My bed was the first bed on the other side of the door. So it went door, their table, and my bed. My bed was three beds high. So it was a bunk bed with a third one. Mine was in the middle. I had someone sleeping under me. Someone sleeping on top of me. I was in the middle. I used to like just lay in my bed like this. It's kind of, I could see the whole dorm. So I'm just like this, just chilling. 
not hurting nobody, just being a casual observer. And Gemini is right here at the table with a couple of his homies. And they're looking at that bag of weed they just grabbed from out front. And he's asking these guys, what is this? This is supposed to be an ounce. And what I thought was real trippy, there was this dude, he, he looked way more intimidating and scarier than Jim and I did. I mean, Jim and I was big, had a gang of ink. He's with like real dark skin, real, he, he looked mean. But this homie looked even meaner. He was pale. Those pale dudes tripped me out. Like, why are you so pale? Have you been like in a box in the middle of the ocean somewhere? This dude's hella pale. No hair, no, no eyebrows, no hair on top of his head. And the only tattoo he has is some big old lettering under his neck. So real pale, tall, kind of buff, some writing on his neck, no hair, just like straight up a creepy homeboy. But dude, Jim and I had that full in check. And Jim and I was asking these dudes, hey, what's up with this? What's up with this weed? It's supposed to be an ounce. And they were looking at it, and in hindsight, well, hindsight a little bit later, and then now, I'm trying to say this, I think they were scared to tell them it wasn't an ounce. But me... Not knowing any better, I chimed up from my little bed area and I was like, hey, that ain't nowhere near an ounce. And they all three looked at me like my face is on upside down. And then Jim and I asked a rhetorical question. I wish I would have known it was rhetorical, meaning he didn't want an answer. He goes, oh yeah, well, what is it then? And I go, oh, well, let me see it. I told him, I'll hand it here. I'm pretty good at eyeballing stuff. And he goes, what? Don't even trip on it. You shouldn't even be seeing this. You don't need to be talking about our business. And just gave me an ice cold look. His homies gave me an ice cold look. And I was like this at one point, kind of looking like, all right. Turn my head the other way. So I watched some TV that was going on right there. And I just backed all the way out. Just trying to be helpful, you know what I mean? Tried telling them that though. And they ended up scattering. I didn't even give it another thought. Until they call lunch. We all go get our lunch. And the yard's on lockdown. Even though the yard's on lockdown, there's a lot of movement on the yard. People have to go to med call. People tend to go to med call or they really do go and they get like Pitmo Bismo or Athlete's Foot Cream, stuff they don't really need, just so they can come out of their barracks 10 and maybe walk over to barracks 4. Pretending like they're going to med pass, slipping to different barracks. So people are going in all kinds of different barracks, running around, even though the yard is closed, and all kinds of people are coming in my barracks, I'm noticing. Even though people do wander the yard and go in different barracks, I've never seen like this, just all kinds of people coming in. And like new faces too, people I'm not recognizing, it's new white boys and just all standing around, looking serious, speaking in hushed tones. I'm thinking, what the hell's going on? Finally, someone says, hey man, they're getting ready to jump a white dude in here. I think it's my black neighbor. Looks at me and says, hey man, you know what's going on? I said, like, they're going to jump a white dude in here. I was like, damn, I immediately thought it was this white fool who he drank with someone's coffee. Now, I've seen this move take place a couple times. In fact, I did it myself. But if you have a table right there, and everyone's cup is white, maybe there'll be some picking with some ash in it. Basically, all the cups are the same. Especially on a store day, there'll be white coffee cups everywhere. It's real easy to drink a, cup of, uh, a sip of your coffee and set it down, and then you're not paying attention to grab a cup, but it's someone else's cup, because there's three on the table. You're not paying attention to grab it. To, well, this white dude, who had some just nasty-ass, watered-down, butt-naked coffee with some cell cider out there. They weren't talking either in two different things doing two different things. But the South Sider set down his coffee. There was a Cadillac. It had like sugar cream and a fireball in there. And he set it down. This white boy picks it up and starts drinking it. And then later tried to play it off like, oh, I thought it was mine. But dude, yours is butt naked and gross and mostly water anyway. What do you mean you thought it was yours? You, even ha you haven't had a fireball the whole time you've been here. So people got mad at that white fool for picking up that South Sider's cup, drinking his coffee. And he was like, mistake, mistake, my bad. I'm thinking they're going to jump his ass. And I was watching them too. I was like this. That was probably my little bed area. My little, my little perk, some boy. I could watch the world. I was watching this fool. I was mean dogging him, mean mugging him. I'm thinking this fool is an idiot. Why would he go drink that other cup like that for? He needs to be watching and paying attention. This is a jail. I'm thinking this fool is gonna get broke off, homeboy. So I'm sitting here staring at him. And this Nazi low rider named Redwood comes up to me. He goes, "Hey Splinter, I'm gonna have to get at you. I'm gonna have to go in the bathroom here in a few minutes. Go in the bathroom, homeboy, and get at you." I instantly thought that he's gonna take me in there, and burn some weed with me, because I've been seeing that a lot lately. The bathroom area is like a sink, and there'll be like a partial wall, and there, here's will be the toilets and the urinal. And right there by the sinks, there's a trash can of people who congregate right there and burn weed, two, three at a time. So when he invited me to the bathroom, I was like, bro, I'm finally one of the fellas, homeboy. They yeah, finally rolled up a joint, like, get Splinter, get him in on this one. Hey, Splinter, let me get it you in the bathroom in a minute. I'm like, we're going to burn some weed? He's like, no, bro. He's like, no. He's like, the salsa just wanted us to tip you up. I'll never forget him saying that. That's the exact word he used, tip, tip you up. I thought, dude, I'm not trying to get tipped. I was like, what? He said, the Southsiders want us to tip you up. 
What do you What do you mean? I was do my brain pop 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 pop. What do you mean? I had no idea what he was talking about. What I could have done. I forgot about saying it's nowhere near an ounce. I didn't even think that was it. That big of a crime. He said, bro, you sight busted. You got up all the South Sider's business, didn't you? They had something out. You commented on it. They didn't appreciate that, bro. They, they want us to handle it. They want us to jump you. And I was like, dude, he asked. He asked, man. And Redwood said, he asked you? Well, no. I was thinking to myself, he didn't ask me, but I went ahead and lied. Yeah, he asked me. I got nothing to lose. I'm already getting ready to get tipped or whatever he calls it. What do I have to lose? Yeah, he asked me. He's like, all right, he's like, kick back, little brother. You know, he's going to go politic on a little bit. He probably don't care if I get my ass to beat or not. He just wants to have a little bit of fun. You know, waste afternoon away just starting to pot, politicking. So he needs to go find Gemini to tell him, hey, the little homie said that you asked him. Well, we'll see what happens next. The problem is they couldn't find Gemini. Couldn't find him. He left, even though the yard was closed, went wandering around. So Red would tell him, hey, kick back. So I'm over in the corner like, what's going to happen next? Dude, three, four hours went by, just sat there. No one had no conversation for me, dude. They never talked to the dude on the butcher's block, homeboy. Anyways, be that as it may. Finally, Jim and I comes back with a big old smile on his face, homie. And whenever he's happy, everyone's happy. Hey! When he's laughing and joking, everyone's laughing and joking. And he went, went and got high on some gotta go. So then he came back and said, and Rebo went right up to him. And Rebo said, it said, hey, the little homie said that you asked him. He goes, oh, I, I didn't ask. I didn't ask. And I heard him say that, and I was like, fuck. And he's like, oh, you know what, whatever, whatever. Okay, I asked then. I asked. I asked. And I'm like, well, dude, don't be so ambidextrous. You asked, you didn't ask. Not, not a big deal to you. Like, it makes a huge impact on me. It's a huge difference. Asked and asked, which is it? You asked, right? You asked. And Redwood said the same thing. Did, did he ask or didn't ask? He's like, dude, he asked. He did ask, whatever. Hey, hey, what's up? Spring some peanut butter. Made some coffee. And dead issue. But I, you know what? I still didn't learn. Bro, I got away by the hair on my chinny chin chin. I almost got tipped. They're going to put it in me, oh boy, no baseline, dog, apparently. And all for some just trying to help, dog, but I didn't learn my lesson. I still opened up my mouth. Because look at this. They end up moving me from barracks 1 to barracks 21 to work AM kitchen. I start noticing that the very last, there's 21 barracks, and they call it like this, barracks, barracks 4, barracks 5, go to chow. Barracks 6, barracks 7, go to chow. Barracks 8, barracks 9, all the way down. And they don't start at 1. They start who's the cleanest. They might start at 8. And then, you know, next week they may start at 14. Doesn't matter, bro. It's just a matter of who has the cleanest and shit. It could start this one. But I started noticing that the very last one, though, they got doubled up on the food. Not the very last barracks. The very last people in the very last barracks. So if barracks 1 is the last dorm to eat, the last 3 or 4 people in line in barracks 1 are going to get doubled up because there's extra food. And her boss even says, this is the last five trays, this is the last five trays, and you got to get rid of that shit. So it just happened to be, Barracks 1 was last. And I went and told the NLR car, Redwood and those fools, like, hey bro, if you guys are last, I can hook you up and double up your tray. He's like, right on brother, right on brother, cool spinner. I was like, yeah, just come and like bang on the wall, and I'll know when you would just get last in line, dude, and I'll, I'll hook you up fast. He says, alright, alright. So we're serving chow. 8, 9, go to chow. 10, 11, go to chow. We're serving, we're serving. All of a sudden, it's like, you know, 1 and 2, go to chow. Or whatever. 2 and 1. Whatever the case. Here comes 1. The very last barracks. And my boss tells me to go clean some. I wasn't even there. And I tried telling some people, like, hey, the last couple of people with my homies, like, like, hook them up. They didn't even get hooked up, bro. Whatever the case may be, it was out. They'll hook them up with there's extras. They didn't. Probably because I said something. Had I not said nothing, dude, it would have been eggs. Buku galore, but since I said, hey, Redwood, hey, guys, be last in line, I'll hook you up fat. Last in line, didn't get hooked up. I had to go clean, no food, didn't get hooked up. They are mad about it. I'm thinking, fuck, why didn't I even say anything, dude? Why didn't I even say anything? So Redwood comes at me, man, Splinter, what's up? And you need to look at it like this, and they do chow. When they call chow, the Southsiders all group up, and they go. The whites are behind them. It's like a line walking to the chow hall. Southsiders, whites, blacks. So the, the NLR dudes got out of line with the whites and got in behind the blacks so they could be last. So it looked like Southsiders, whites, blacks, and those three dudes from NLR. They got the in line, in with the blacks, just saying get a double up, which they didn't get. They were mad about it. So the next day, they wait for me to get off work, bro. So I'm AM kitchen. I work all night. The yard opens up 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm getting off work. They're standing there. What the fuck, Spinner? You didn't give us extra food. I'm, I apologize. I apologize. My bad. Come back tomorrow. And that's when the game we go rig them all. Like, dude, you know we're eating all the way in the back of the line with the flash. Many of those look stupid. You better hook. I'll hook it up, dude. I'll hook it up. Tomorrow. And I'm thinking, why did I even open my fucking mouth? Tomorrow for sure. The next day, dude, 8 and 9, go to chow. 
10, 11, go chow. 12, 13. All the way come down. Barracks 1. Barracks 1, go to chow. And they're coming. My boss asked me to do some other shit. I couldn't believe it, dude. I was just unable to hook them up. Unable, dude. There's just no, no, no. They didn't get hooked up. There wasn't enough food. It, was just, it went all bad. And like I said, probably because I said something, dude. Had I not said nothing. But bro, dude, is this life, dude, trying to make me a liar. So they didn't get hooked up yet again. And it's even worse because the next day was store day. So they let us out of barracks. They let us out of the kitchen a little bit early. Those of us in barracks 21. They let us go to the store because they know by the time they're running store at afternoon yard, we'll be asleep. So we sleep during the day. We work all night. We go to work like 10 p.m., get off like 5 a.m. Or whatever, some bullshit. I can't remember. But I do remember those. They let us go a little bit early so that we can go to store. So those NLR dudes know that I came back to the store, homeboy, that I got fat. And they're going to use that to their benefit. They're going to pump up the anger. Of course, they're mad. Now they're even a little bit more mad. They're going to try to get me to pay them, dog. That's how this shit works. So here I come back with my two bags of goodies. Again, they're in front of my barracks. Spoiler, what the fuck, man? You didn't give us some extra food. You made us look stupid with the end of the line. I'm like, dude, here, my bad. Here, here's a cinnamon roll for you. Here's a cinnamon roll for you. Cinnamon roll soup for you. My bad. Don't do it again. Don't get in the line. I guess I can't do it, homeboy. I mean, I don't know what the fizz up. I tried. It's a thought that counts, right? No, homeboy, it's not a thought that counts. A thought in here will get your freaking throat cut. Oh, okay, good point. Good point. I love you, too. So, homie, I, I, what, what do you mean? Let me give you a bonus story about one of those dudes from NLR that were embarrassed swung with me. It was me, Redwood, I can't even remember the other two dudes' names. Well, I remember one of the guy's names, but his last name anyway. I don't want to say it. Listen to this story. This dude has a story. I knew it before I met him, and he lied like a motherfucker. There's lies up in here. He was sitting on the throne of lies, homeboy. Look, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. Just trip on this. I know this dude, homeboy, who slings a big old bag of weed. He's in his pad one night, and all of a sudden, his... All of a sudden, it goes dark because someone jumped, someone unscrewed the light bulb on his porch. So someone unscrewed his porch light bulbs, and it goes dark in his room. And he's like, "What the hell?" He's like, "Someone unscrewed my thing, bro." So he gets a um a mag flashlight. He gets a one of them big old mag lights, some boy. So he gets a big old mag flashlight. And the way his house is set up, you walk right into it, and it's like a real tiny room. They use it like as a garage with. For like tools and stuff. And then you have to walk up like a little step. And here's a living room. Here's a bedroom. So there's that little room you first walk into. And you have to like walk up a step. So he's right here with his mag flashlight. Because he knows they're coming in. Because they unscrewed his light bulbs. Next thing you know. Boom. They kick in the door bro. His door comes flying open. And here comes this dude come running in. This dude comes running in. So dude's like. Bam. Hits him as hard as he can with a mag flashlight. And just knocks dude back. And the dude had a gun. Boom, 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 boom. Shoot some shots off. I saw the holes in the wall. They run away. You don't hear nothing about it. Well, the guy who got hit with the flashlight has a big old scar on his head. A big old crack. Where he just nailed them, dog. Split his wig. Well, he went around telling everybody that when he kicked the door, because I gotta say it, the dude's a straight lame. The dude I know that sells the weed, they had the flashlight. Straight up lame, bro. You wouldn't want... The hood to know that this dude knocked you with a flashlight, split your wig, and put you on your ass. You'd feel stupid. Because this dude's a, a, a lame, bro. You know what I'm saying? But he's not lame enough to let someone come in his house, bro. They have that fight or flight. They kick in the door. He hits him with a flashlight. Knocks him back. Now dude's going around telling everybody that he kicked in the door. And dude jumped out and shot at him. And one of the bullets went, zoom! Hit his skull and left that little mark that the flashlight made. It split his wig, a cool little mark. And you might look at it and go, dude, that does look like a bullet went zoom. But dude, what are the odds? A bullet's going to hit your skull and just leave it like a little hot little mark, bro. You know what I'm saying? No. But if someone said, dude, that's from a flashlight, you'd look and go, yeah, that is from blunt force. So, dog, he'd tell that, he'd love that story, too. Every time a new person would come in or someone asked, he'd love being like, okay, trip on this. I went to this house one time, I unplugged light bulbs, I kicked the door in, and dude, and every time he got to the part, and the dude came out shooting, dude, and barely hit me, I was like, I wish I could raise one eyebrow. So I just want to be like, when he gets to that part of the story, because I know the truth. I know it was a straight flashlight. This lame ass dude, who probably weighs 90 pounds soaking wet, came out and just, boom, what forged you, and sent your ass, sent your ass flying into the freaking fences, homie. Split that wig. Hey, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut the string and let it fly. It is Sunday. Hopefully you guys come through tonight at 8 o'clock, 8-ish, uh, for the live, because, you know, we do those viewer choices here at Prison POV. 
I do a community tab, ask your question, I make a video called Viewer's Choice. Let's do a Viewer's Choice Live Edition. I'll be live, ask your questions. If you don't want to wait until the live to ask your question, go to the community tab that I have set up. Describe in the live and the viewer's choice and leave some questions there. There's already a couple. We'll work them in, homeboy. With that being said, I'm going to cut the string and let it fly. Peace.